Great. Um, welcome to part three of Managing Your Money. I am Erin Ellis, financial educator at the Philadelphia Federal Credit Union. Been with PFCU for six and a half years now. Little about P PFCU. Many of you are probably members already, but just some information. We are not a bank. We are actually a financial cooperative, so we're owned by our members, which usually just means we don't charge the same amount of fees associated with commercial banks. So that is, is definitely an advantage is that we're, we're usually cheaper than the banks are. And we do that because profits are returned to our members. So this comes out in better rates and better um, lower fees. We pay you a little more interest than the banks do too. This is our plan for today with really focusing on step four in this process. So the last couple of weeks, we've been working through talking about savings and goals. That was week one. Looking last week, we talked about income, tracking income, tracking spending, and looking at ways to increase income or decrease spending. So that was last week. And now we're working on step four. So we're gonna pull it all together with creating a cash flow budget. So we're, at this point, the cash flow, we want to match the timing of the income to where and when we need to use it. So monthly budgets, are great. It's a great start, right? I, I want to know, do I have enough money to pay all my bills? However, they don't always work from week to week. A cash flow budget is a projection of how and when you get and use your cash and other financial resources you have. And when we talk about financial resources, it's everything from food stamps to uh, maybe you have a health flex spending account at work, or, um, yeah, I mean, resources are really broad. So this is going to look at when are resources coming in and when do you need to use them. Cash flow budget is different from a regular budget because it includes not only the amount for each item, but also the timing. So that's the key here. And that's what we're going to focus on is the timing. The timing is important because we often find ourselves flush with cash one week and then splurge on something fun. I have been guilty of, you know, of, oh, we have plenty of money, let's get takeout. And then all of a sudden the next week we don't have everything we need to do what we need to do. And so the timing of our money matters and cash flow budgets are going to help us identify where I'm falling short and then where I can, I can move things around. So we want to ensure that we have the financial re resources on hand to cover the most important expenses. So I don't fall short on the rent or the mortgage. This cash flow budget is going to help me target areas where I could cut back or where I need to sort of make some, some adjustments. So remember, um, sometimes there is not enough money to cover all the bills for the month. That is a reality, unfortunately. And so in this case, it's important, important to develop a plan to prioritize bills because we want to, if we can, in fact, you know, we look at this whole monthly plan and we just say, I just, I don't have enough, right? Um, we're gonna revisit some of the strategies for decreasing spending and increasing income. But in the meantime, we have to make a short-term plan to prioritize bills, pay the bills that are protecting our home, our income, our shelter, um, and other obligations we have, you know, to feed our family and things like that. So we wanna keep that in mind when it comes to those lower priority deaths compared to those higher priority bills and think through the consequences. And so that being said, I do have one of the resources that I include in most of my webinars that I've done is about prioritizing your bills. And it will help work through if you really are struggling and you just said, you know, right now I don't have what I need to do to cover all of my basic expenses. There's a tool and it's really useful 
um, that I have included in the handout that you can sort of take a look and it will help you navigate what the most important bills are first and which ones can wait a little longer because we have to maintain certain things, our homes, our children, um, our, our employment, and some of the other stuff, uh, unfortunately, will, will fall to the wayside for the moment. So it's good to, to strategize and make a plan if that's the worst case scenario. Uh, a lot of the tools I'm sharing with you come right from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So I really like the CFPB. They offer a lot of really great tools to empower consumers like us. They answer questions, provide tips to help us navigate our choices. And they also, a big part of what they do is educate so that we are more financially capable. So we can learn and find about retirement and research and educate companies about their responsibilities, but also consumers about best practices. All right, so let's, I am going to pop another poll. And I want to know how much time do you think, so just guess, the average adult spends managing household finances. And this doesn't say monthly. How much time every month? That's the question. How much time every month does the average adult spend managing household finances? So do they spend only 15 minutes, just over an hour, two to three hours a month, or more than three hours? What do you think? Let me know. A few more seconds on the poll. So it should be on your screen. How much time does the average adult spend managing household finances a month? All right, I am going to close the poll. Okay, so it's pretty well split, pretty well split. So um, a lot of people saying 15 minutes. The answer to this is one hour and 12 minutes. So about one hour and 15 minutes. So those of you who said um, the second choice are correct. So I'll give you a tiny bit more information about this. Uh, not, not much time, right? One hour and 12 minutes, which breaks down to two minutes and 24 seconds a day which is wild. So two minutes and 24 seconds a day, really thinking about our money and managing our household finances. Now, if you manage a budget at work, I'm guessing you spend way more than um, one hour a month on that budget, sort of checking in and seeing how it's doing. This is interesting. It's um, the question I found juxtaposed with the amount of time we spend watching TV and so the average adult spends about 85 hours a month watching TV compared to one hour and 12 minutes managing our household financing. Interesting. Um, yeah, however, 48% of people say they want to be financially prepared for the future. That's a strange statistic. I would think that more people would want to be financially prepared. Um, but the idea is here, you're already spending this, this hour, right? So here you are. Okay, and if, um, if you're on the phone, I will do my best to make sure that you have, um, I can let you know what's going on on our screen. Okay, great. And I'm curious, and I don't have this question, but I'm curious, and you can please write this into the question box, how much time do you spend monthly on your finances? And how do you compare? Uh, do you spend more than the average American or less time? I would say most months I probably spend more, but every once in a while it ends up being a little less. Um, and those are the months that it's problematic. I can definitely say that for sure. So. All right, so with the agenda, we looked at the first week, we looked at having our values and our, our goals line up to make SMART goals. 
we talked about emergency savings. We're going to revisit this again because emergency savings is really that foundation of everything we're doing when it comes to our, our finances. We'll look at revisiting goals because sometimes goals need to be revisited. Um, I have a resource for this too. And then those big purchases. So we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about this this week. But those those are sort of the basics, right? We start with what do we actually want to accomplish? That's step one. So we're not going to list it right now unless you you want to type into the question box. Um, but how much, you know, how many things can you think of? You can actually cover so many expenses with a thousand dollars. So it's something the majority of Americans, we do not have a thousand dollars to cover an emergency expense. And this is not a surprise. Savings is hard and you wouldn't be here if savings was easy. So there are some studies and some research that shows that if you start with $500, there are so many different emergencies that $500 can start to help with. That $500 can cover a variety of things from a plane ticket to visit a sick relative, maybe not during COVID, but other times. Um, $500 can help with a car repair. $1,000 can go a long way toward covering your rent or your mortgage. So just starting with a goal of instead of, we often get caught up with the rule of thumb of three to six months savings, is what you need for an emergency. Well, that's not always realistic. It's not always attainable. So let's start with 500. Once we get to that 500 mark, then we push up and reach for that thousand. And then you can work on the next steps, but we really wanna make sure that we have some sort of emergency savings because in an emergency, we really, the cash is very important to be able to have on hand. And when I say cash, I mean in an account, safely stored, um, preferably not in your mattress, although savings is savings, so that's okay too. Um, yeah, so we looked at, we're not going to talk about this a tremendous amount today, but we looked at tracking our income. And so we're going to look at where are we tracking our income and how are we categorizing it. And so when it comes to cash flow, when it comes to this cash flow budget, we're going to be looking at tracking our income and benefits weekly. I need to know what's coming in before I can plan for what's being spent. I'm going to track the money and benefits I receive. That's the first step. And so one of the tools I gave to you on the handout is this income and benefits weekly tracker. And so you can write in for yourself where your income falls. Um, and, and how much it is. And so whether it's an income through cash or resource, and you'll see, and I use this example throughout. So this, this fictional person I've created has a job, actually two jobs, right? One is paid weekly and one is paid bi-weekly every other week. And so we're looking at this person who makes $18 an hour, claims two on their taxes, is a single person with one dependent. Right, so we're thinking like a mom and a child, speaking as a mom. Um, and so that other, in this case, is going to be reimbursement. So this is something okay. that some of us have access to. We have a flex spending account for daycare. And so in this case, this person is taking advantage of their flex spending. So they get this money reimbursed to them every two weeks, right? And it's a resource um that that pays for that helps to pay for child care hopefully that's not too confusing okay so looking at this tool you can see you can track your own what comes in each week and this is going to be the first step and the weekly is key here so then we're looking at spending and so now you know last week we looked at the specifics of our expenses and how we can track them by keeping receipts or writing things down. Um, 
And now we're going to take this information that we have, what I'm paying for, and categorize it in these weekly segments. And so we're going to look at it, the income coming in weekly and the expenses going out weekly. So we're going to look at that. So where does this go? So this information goes then on a calendar. And this is something too that I have for you. And we're starting just with the bills. We're gonna figure out which bills, um, figuring out which bills to expect will help me plan to have enough money on hand. So I'm gonna put all the different bills on the calendar. Now the calendar, it gives you, they give you eight little boxes up at the top to say, here are my bills. I have my cell phone and my debt payments and my rent or mortgage, my internet, my car loan, my daycare, a car insurance. Yeah, I, I definitely have more than bills, but um, you can certainly add things in. I use a calendar for my own, much like this one I'm showing you here. And, um, but it's just a very simple calendar from the dollar store. I used to use the little PFCU calendars, the little pocket calendars we gave out, um, but that was way too small. So I just outgrew it and I needed something a little bigger. So uh, I got a calendar at the dollar store. It just has the months, that's it. And so really set up just like this. So I am going to take a second and show you what this tool looks like. All right, so this is one of the tools and this is the bill calendar tool. Again, you can use it just your own calendar, but you can also take this tool and you can type it in. And so you can put your own expenses right into this tool. And so I really love these tools because they're really user-friendly, easy to use. It's a great place to start and it keeps it simple. I think probably my favorite part of this is that it keeps it simple because that is what makes the most difference to me is to have something really simple and straightforward. So that's that bill calendar tool that you have. So you're gonna use that calendar, whatever calendar you have to write down, where are the bills? Where do they come out? And this is something I do. I log into my PFCU account and I just go through the list every month of all the bills and write down last month, this is where they all came out and then sort of use that to, to base this month off of. If you are sending checks or money is going out to get paid, you know, you want to calculate that into this too. So if my, you know, auto payment comes out on the 10th, then I need to make sure, you know, that's, that's in there by the 10th. So I have all that. All right. Now you'll, you'll notice that, that this example has some debt and many of us find ourselves with some debt. Um, and so this is my weekly plug for Clarify. So Clarify is a local nonprofit and they have financial empowerment centers throughout the city and the region. And they have helped since 2013, they have helped over 12,000 people with counseling. And right now, all of their financial counseling is available over the phone. So if you are looking to talk to someone more about your credit or your monthly budget, or you want to really sit down and create a cash flow budget with, with another person, with an expert, you can make those phone calls and talk to Clarify and they will help you for free. And they're a really outstanding resource. Okay, so now we've got our income tracked, right? We, we use that tracker to look at when the weekly income is coming in. We use the calendar to say when the bills are going out. And now we're gonna look at ways to improve our cash flow and also, oh, I lost my train of thought. Ways to improve the cash flow and what changes we can make to make this the most efficient as possible. So getting through the month, tracking when your money comes in and goes out can help us understand if I have enough from week to week. 
So I want to find then suggestions for how to improve my cash flow. So that's what we're going to do. First, we have to examine it, and then we can make some changes. I want to know where am I falling short and how can I make improvements? Okay, so there are a lot of techniques and we're going to talk about them in just a second, but maybe, you know, maybe my landlord, I've heard of this happening, but maybe my landlord lets me pay on the 5th instead of the 1st of the month. Or maybe I can split and pay my rent two times a month. Or maybe I can pay my board, my mortgage bi-weekly instead of monthly, right? So I'm paying then every two weeks, it's a smaller amount. If that's not an option, there are other options and we're gonna look at this, but we're gonna use this budget to set targets about how and when I'm going to spend my money going forward. But we're also going to keep in mind, we have to be realistic about what it looks like. All right. So this is the next tool that is in this little toolkit that I'm that I'm sharing with you. And this is showing we're combining, we're taking the income and we're writing in the weekly income that we have from a previous exercise. Then we have our week our weekly expenses and we're writing those in. And so if we go through this week by week, so you'll see week one at the top and look straight down. So week one, I've got $300 in my checking account. I earn $220 at my job. Other resources, I have that $200 credit toward daycare. So my total income is gonna add up from what I have, my starting balance, and then what I'm bringing home that week. So my total income is $720. Now, what am I spending? I'm spending $25 eating out. Every week is $170 on childcare. I pay my rent at the beginning of the month, paying $200 in groceries, transportation, $60, and other, that's, you know, the miscellaneous stuff, that trip to Target or something like that. So at the end of the week, I have negative $630. And this is, is no good. But if we fast forward all the way to week five, where it's gonna show sort of what's left over at the end, we have $200 extra. If this were a monthly budget, it would leave me with $200 at the end. Now you'll notice there's no savings and I don't really believe in extra money. I like to, to calculate every dollar into what I'm doing, but, Technically, I have enough money. I have more income than my expenses. But you'll see after week one, I'm in a really bad place. And the reality is I probably couldn't have paid my housing and I probably couldn't have bought those, bought those groceries, right? All right, so I've tracked everything for week one. Now we're gonna carry over that minus 630 into week two because now my balance is negative $630. Right. Good news, though, I get paid that week from my main job and I get my my additional income from that side hustle, that second job. So now I'm at about seven hundred ten dollars. Right. And you'll see there are fewer payments coming out, but some big ones. Right. So I've got my debt payment. And in this case, it's a student loan. And that's two hundred thirty five eating out again, every week without fail, I'm paying childcare, housing and utilities, so that's a um, electricity bill. Oh, I'm sorry, electricity is included. It's my, my uh, internet bill. I have also then my groceries, spending a little less this week because I spent a lot last week, spending transportation. This is gonna include my car insurance and then any additional costs I have. So again, I'm in the negative. So then looking at week three, right? I carry down that balance at negative 195 up to week through week two ending balance. And so go through the list again, and I'm not gonna read this one. I will say, you know, what are the, the confusing expenses 
there's a debt payment here where I'm paying back my mom $100 a month, I'm paying $90 in credit card, and I'm paying a student loan of $235. Transportation, one month I pay a car note, one month I pay car insurance, and the other months I'm just paying, or I'm least, sorry, the other weeks I'm just paying for gas. So these are sort of the, the miscellaneous and various expenses. Now with this, there's a lot of room to wiggle. And so when we get to the end, we do have that $200, which hopefully I can save. But in the meantime, let's look at some ways that we could rearrange, that we could make different choices. All right, so for those of you who were here last week, this is gonna be similar to the, the list of, here are all the different ways that you could possibly improve your cash flow, or uh, some, of, some ways that you could improve cash flow, right? So let's look at these. Not all of these are going to be right for everyone. So we're gonna look through this list, and this is where you can take a moment to reflect and decide which is right for you. Are any of these going to be useful? And if so, I would recommend you write it down. You can also type it into the question box, and I would be happy to share it with the rest of the group. But take a look and see. So how are we gonna improve our cash flow? So Again, this is a tool that I have for you. So you can see that little asterisk means that this tool is included in your handout. So you have access to this afterwards. But here are some options and I'm gonna talk through them so they make sense. But, and after I talk through them, I'm going to ask you to choose, choose one that you would like to do for yourself. Okay, so one option to improve cash flow is negotiating new new due dates for bills so you can and let me know in the questions if you have done this but you can actually call the company or sometimes go online and just say hey can i have a different due date that due date doesn't work for me i would like to pay it a different day and for many bills you can do that credit cards um, loan payments things like that so that's one option Another option to improve cash flow, negotiate splitting a large monthly payment into two smaller ones. Can you pay your mortgage bi-weekly? That means every two weeks. Or can you ask your landlord if they would take half the rent and then another half of the rent? I don't know if anyone's done this. I've seen the suggestion, but I don't know anyone who's actually done it. Um, However, if the landlord does not accept this, we have other ideas. So let's keep moving. Can you change a large lump sum payment into smaller monthly payments on things like insurance, car insurance, right? My car insurance, you can pay either every six months or monthly. The one I have now gives a significant discount for paying every six months, but a previous car insurance I had, it was only a couple of dollars different if I paid monthly? Well, definitely that's a better choice then, right? For me, right? Everyone's different, but for me, that's what made the most sense. Check and see if you qualify for emergency assistance. So in the handouts, you will see the phone number for Benefili. Do you qualify for emergency heating assistance or LIHEAP? It is LIHEAP season right now. So if you would qualify for emergency heating assistance, water, things like that, check that out. I'm already seeing Patrice is sharing in the chat, liking to refinance auto loan or student loans. Yeah, these, these are, you know, a little more uh, intense over on, on the right-hand column. The left-hand are going to be some sort of pretty straightforward. Uh, looking at level payment options for utility bills. PGW and PICO. So if we're all Philadelphia people here, but if you're not, I would encourage you to check out whatever your local uh, energy company is. Has an option that you can have level payment plans for your utilities. So this is something that not everyone realizes is out there, but 
you can sign up to say, I want my gas bill to be about the same every month. So currently my gas bill is $65 every month. And that's not based on income, it's based on my usage. So rather than paying a ton for gas in the winter and barely anything in the summer, all year I pay about $65. And one, once or a few times, I don't know, I could read it and find the answer. They adjust the bill so that I'm never paying too much. Um, I'm never really accruing a big debt with the, the utility company, and I, but I get the consistency of the same bill every month. So I really would encourage you, if you don't have that, that level payment, if you haven't signed up for it, you can do it with PGW and Pico right through their website. It's very simple. Or call. You can also, so we talked about, you know, your landlord might not accept half the rent at once and half the rent later. Um, but somebody referred to this in one of my webinars before as like a self escrow. So essentially what you're doing is you have that automatically deposit a monthly amount into a separate account. So when the payment is due, the money is already saved. And so this is something that I'm doing. Now you do need to be ahead in order to make this work, but my mortgage is due on the first of the month so the weeks where i have a little more cash flowing in i make sure to deposit some of that money into a separate account and then when it's time for me to pay that big bill that once a month i have the money already ready so i've heard other people do this with like buying a money order so this is just a more um electronic way of doing it but yeah i have a big bill once a month so i buy a money order for half of it and then i have half of it at the beginning and half of it at the end um, and so i'm going to recommend you know not that money order although that can work and if that works for you that's good too but basically you're sort of saving in your own for that bigger bill i do this for my car insurance because now i get a significant reduction if I pay it at six months at a time. So I put in that $100 every month so that when that bill comes due, I have what I need. Similarly, I do this with my mortgage and my childcare costs because those are all huge and they come at the same time at the month. And so sort of every week I'm setting aside money for that. This is another really good tip. It's check to make sure your withholding is correct on your check. And this is about your tax withholding. If you are used to getting a really big refund and you would rather have more money in your paycheck and a smaller refund, you can adjust your W-4. And I would recommend you do that if this is something that makes sense for you. I was getting a pretty big refund the last couple of years since I had children. And I thought I would have better use of that money if I had it every month in my paycheck. So using the IRS's W-4 tool that they have to sort of populate the new W-4 form for you, I was able to adjust my withholding without really much trouble at all. And I gave the form right to HR, they adjusted it, and sort of checking in on my taxes this year, it worked exactly the way I wanted it to. So I really recommend, if you wanna have more money in your paycheck and a smaller refund, filling out that W-4 tool through the IRS's website because it will help you to adjust so that you get more of your own money. Okay, so those are some of the ones that sort of, you know, we could all do. They, they could possibly work in different ways for many of us, many different circumstances. Um, the right side here, is a little more um, specific circumstances. So one of them is, and this always comes with a huge asterisk here, is explore options to consolidate debt. There's a lot of fine print when it comes to this. You know, this only works if you have good credit and you can stop relying on those credit cards. So I would recommend if you think this is an option for you to talk with Clarify and the financial empowerment centers, they're all the same people, the same organization, um, to see if you are in a place where this makes sense. But as you know, one of our, our colleagues here, Patrice mentioned, you know, 
her credit is much better than when she repurchased that when she purchased that auto loan and got that student loan. So absolutely it's worth exploring the idea. And notice I said explore, I didn't say go out and do it, but exploring the idea because you could get a much better interest rate potentially. Interest rates on homes right now are really, really low. So if you still are locked into a high interest rate on your home, it could be that you would benefit from refinancing. So it's absolutely worth talking to a financial professional. Again, I'm gonna recommend Clarify as a sort of um, place to check in and see, does this make sense for me? Is this a good fit? So, you know, other things, consider selling a car for a less expensive one. That's got a lot of complication to it, right? Um, refinancing your auto loan or, or student loan. So there are, you know, just sort of exploring these options are what is, is a good start. So now I'm going to put it to you. So I would like, you know, we really talked in depth about a lot of these, but I would like for you to think through some of these, what makes the most sense for you? And I'm gonna ask you through a poll, and mostly I'm, I'm asking about the points that I talked about first, but which of these do you, do you wanna try first? After today, which of these will you try? Will you negotiate new due dates for bills? Will you change large payments into smaller payments? Will you explore level billing for utilities? Will you check your tax withholding? Or will you deposit money into a savings for a bigger periodic bill? So take a minute and answer this poll. So you should see the poll popped up on your screen. What's one of the methods that you are gonna choose to improve your cash flow? All right, couple more seconds. All right. Great, thank you very much. I love this. You guys are, are very cool because um, I, I see it looks like, you know, the most popular one is deposit a monthly, deposit, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean, deposit monthly. Oh, into a savings for a bigger periodic bill, right? So that that's great. But it looks like we have folks who are going to try all sorts of different things to improve tax uh, cash flow, and you know, know that you don't have to pick one. You can certainly do more. But I just wanted to push you today to say, okay, after today, this is the one thing I'm going to set up, um, and then I'm going to look at other ideas too. But I want to, you know, this is where I'm going to start. Okay. So that being said, we're gonna revisit our friend here and see where can they make adjustments to their cash flow. And so I did this really annoying thing where I went through and I was just like, oh, I could change it here and I could change this and I could make changes here. And then I circled everything and I was like, well, that's not really that helpful. It's not really that helpful to say like, there are all these ways I can change. Now there are, right? I can say, I bet I can adjust my debt payment. My landlord might allow me to make adjustments to my rent, maybe even when I pay it. Um, I could probably make adjustments to the groceries fairly easily. So I'm looking right off the bat and I'm gonna go back to the not annoying one that's not having everything circled and look at, you know, just looking at it as if I'm looking at it for the first time. I know that that rent is a big burden. So that's gonna be something that I think, yeah, let me see what I can do. And if I can't do anything to the rent, is there something I can do to the other more significant bills, right? Maybe I can do something with that childcare expense or do something with that grocery bill being high. So here is one idea. So this is the same cash flow, it's just stretched out a little. So very simply, I added savings because it wasn't in there, right? But technically I have $200. And then I'm paying my rent a week early. So this is gonna involve B 
being ahead a little bit. Maybe you haven't gotten your stimulus payment yet, and that stimulus payment, you can use one of those to pay that rent, and then you're on track, right? I'm not recommending you take your emergency money and pay a month ahead at all. I don't even believe in paying bills ahead of time because then you don't have cash you need when you need it. But in this case, I'm going to start paying my rent at the end of the month, which is really a week early. And if I do that, everything else balances out. Again, I'm going to have to sort of scrape together that $845 somehow, but maybe tax season, you know, I'm about to get a tax refund. And so that's a good time to get that $800 together. So there are a variety of ways that I could that I could figure out to do that. Now, if that doesn't work, there are other options. That's one. And you'll notice now all of the math works out much more successfully. So here's another option. So with this option, I'm making adjustments to my rent, this is that magic thing when the landlord allows me to pay in two, two portions, or maybe I'm saving and putting it aside myself. I moved my biggest grocery bill to the end of the month rather than at the beginning. Right, so I, so I made that adjustment. All right, I'm gonna buy more of my dry goods at the end of the month and then those will carry me through the rest of the month so i'm only going back for fruit and milk and things like that child care too now that child care cost i'm going to sort of hit up a big one at the end of the month and pay for the next few weeks and again i don't like paying bills far in advance because i don't want to lock up money that i need but in this case i can even hold on to that money as long as I have it ahead of time. I feel like that thought I, I didn't articulate very well, but um, basically making sure that I have that $510 so that for the next few weeks, I don't need to worry about it. Those debt payments, this one is simple. I called and I said, hey, can I change this debt payment? Or I went online and adjusted my student loan due date and my credit card due date, and I have a new debt payment date. So those are, this is, you know, another scenario for adjusting this. And I also added savings to this one, I think. 195, there it is, okay. Um, and I wanna make sure the savings is part of that plan. So, you know, you have two options. You can do it using this sort of calendar or you can do it with this weekly. I would say, you know, using both and fiddling around with them until you see what works exactly, exactly right for you. So we're looking at how we can improve cash flow by adjusting expenses. So maybe that's the visual of this calendar works better than that weekly plan. And that's okay too, it's sort of the same thing. Um, and I basically use them, them combined. I sort of add up at the end of each week and look at what, what is um, left over cash for the next week. So adjust your expenses using a calendar to sort of move stuff around and play with it. Fill in the calendar, you know, so this is one of the tools, you will have this calendar. Fill it in with the dates for this month. You've got your cash flow income and your cash flow expenses. Take both of those and put them all on here. Use a pencil so you can move things around. Um, I like to do this stuff by hand because it makes a lot more sense. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to automate sort of everything because I really want to make sure every dollar is going somewhere. So there's not sort of um, an excess amount in my checking account 
it's exactly what I need for what I need to do. And so I really want to be specific with um, with all of this and sort of move stuff around and manipulate it. I find that it's much more useful to do it sort of pen to paper by hand um, than with an automated or electronic system. Now I pay my bills all electronically, of course, um, but really I make the plan sort of this old fashioned way by hand, scribbling around on paper. So then we want to take action to make these changes a reality. I can do this by adjusting spending habits, calling creditors to change bill dates, splitting those periodic bills, all those different strategies that we talked about. I do have a video, but I'm not sure that I can, that I can share it. So, so looking at our overall strategies to improve cash flow, we're looking, we talked about ways to increase our income and other financial resources. We talked about ways to decrease spending and the use of cash and other financial resources. And then today we focused on matching the timing of the income to when we need it. So this cash flow budget is a projection of how you will get and use your cash, right? And other financial resources. So here are today's action items. So from today, I want you to think about, I will track my income, including benefits. I will track my expenses by keeping receipts for a month. I will use my bills and expenses to create that cash flow budget, right? So we're writing down weekly income and weekly expenses and sort of moving things around to make it work. And I will explore improving my cash flow using this technique. And you all chose one of them by when. And I'm going to add to that and say by when and who are you going to talk to about it? So that's that last accountability partner or buddy is to say, I'm going to work on this improving my cash flow skill by, you know, next payday. And I'm going to talk about it with my partner. And that accountability buddy, it doesn't have to be someone that's checking up on you. It's just about sort of checking in. And, um, and it, it really helps us stay on track. So I am going to show you some of the resources that I have for you, the handouts. Um, plenty of time today for questions. So I sort of pulled these, these out into three parts and probably could have condensed them all to an hour. I started with one that was much too rushed and broke it up into lots of little pieces. So it was a little more manageable. Um, so still sort of figuring out exactly the timing, but it looks like we're just about done. I will take the next couple minutes Please put in questions into the question box if you have them. I'm going to show you the handouts. Um, so take a minute to put the questions into the questions box. And I will show you the goodies that I have for you. All right, so this is about today. Um, just want to thank everyone again for attending and please check our PFCU events page to register for another free webinar. Coming up in February, I'm doing two part this time, two part credit series. So sign up again for one or both parts of those. It'll focus on an introduction to credit for the first session and the second session will be more about managing your debt for those of us who already have sort of that established. And then on February 18th, I'm really excited about 
the webinar I have saving for children and this is going to be in collaboration with the Bureau of Savings Programs from the Pennsylvania Department of the Treasury and other partners from Fund My Future and Neighborhood Allies. So please take a minute and register for those if you are interested. Um, and the other resources are, are right here and you'll be able to access them. So if you want those handouts, save them now. We will not, I will not be emailing them after the fact. So save them. If you do need a copy of anything, please email me and I will be happy to send it to you, but you do have access to it right now. All right, so I see a couple of questions. So I just want to, um, so someone is asking about an account just for bills or other specific monthly payments. Um, I think that's a great idea. I separate my money a lot into a lot of different buckets so that um, with PFCU and most credit unions, you can have many shares. So I have more than one savings share and each one is labeled something different. So you can change the name and you can say, I have one right now that is just for my car insurance. So I have my checking account, I have my emergency savings, which I hide from myself using uh, Tellernet. You can actually go into the settings and hide the account. You can also rename the account. So I have my emergency money hiding. And then I have my money for my insurance that I need to pay periodically. I have that in its own separate share. So I'm a big fan of that. I want to know whatever whatever is in my checking account is for bills and spending which means that i've already saved because that's one of my bills it's been paid so i love the idea of having more sort of either buckets or shares or accounts and they're called shares with a credit union because you can have many of them and and it can be a really good tool to use so i love that idea um, other questions Clarify is absolutely free for one on one financial counseling. Yeah, and hopefully I answered that. And I really highly recommend them. They're a great resource. You can call, there's two different numbers. It's all Clarify. So you see three different options for reaching Clarify, every single one is the same organization and they're great. Um, and last week's webinar, if you would email me, I can send you the PowerPoint from last week. And I'll put my email up on the screen again. But it is also in that handout. And so the complete money management tools and resources, all of them from this series are here. And so you have that, it is in, in the handout that says complete money management resources and tools. Okay, Samara, we're coming back to you in a second because I'm gonna put that question to the group. Um, and a question just to follow up about, clarify what is the difference between financial empowerment and other clarify options? Um, None, none. The financial empowerment centers get some funding, I think, from the city, Clarify is its own nonprofit, and then also PFCU is partnered with Clarify. So that 855 number, if you call it, Clarify will know that you're a member of PFCU. Um, and so it's, it's possible that you would talk to someone sooner. I'm not sure exactly, but... Um, you're getting the same excellent service, no matter what. So if you are a member of PFCU though, call that 855 number. For anyone else, you can call the 215. Okay, so, um, 
hopefully that answers it. I should just really simplify and take off the other two options. But, you know, it just in case someone says, oh, I see this financial empowerment center, what is it? Or I, I've heard of Clarify, what is it? It's the same, they're all wonderful. Um, and for those of you who are stepping away, there will be a survey that pops up at the end. Please take that out. It's a huge, please take a moment to complete that. It takes, you know, one minute and it's very helpful to us in planning more events and creating more opportunities. Okay, Samara's question is, strategies for food budgets. I find myself overspending on food and groceries every month. So anyone that has suggestions for Samara, please put it in the question and I will read it. Um, a couple of suggestions off the bat would be, you know, the classic don't go hungry, but um, going with a list is a good strategy and really just making sure that you are sticking with the list. Even if you put something in the cart, take it out. So, so shopping with a list can be helpful. Um, I've heard people to say stay around the outside of the store because that is where you're getting all of your fresh foods anyway. And so that can be a good strategy to avoid those more pre-packaged foods that can add up more and we end up sort of splurging on. Um, personally, my favorite is Aldi and Aldi tends not to have all the extra stuff to begin with and they have really good prices. So I find that Aldi is a good option. Patrice likes to coupon and has taught a lot of people. So if you can learn from someone who knows what they're doing, that can be a really good idea. I caution people against signing up for coupons because they can sometimes make us buy things that we wouldn't normally buy. But if you are like Patrice and you can sort of be that expert, then it can be a really good, maybe she can teach us all. Um, so another suggestion is to visit a neighborhood grocery store and buy larger bags of frozen vegetables in generic bags. So we're looking at bigger, bigger portions too. Yeah, and splitting them up. Oh, another good suggestion, planning meals weekly or monthly. And then also using what you have in the fridge or the cabinet. Those are those are really good tips too. Um, yeah, if you are buying groceries around the meal, then you're spending less on things that you might use. Um, my partner and I will challenge ourselves every once in a while to clear out the cupboard, which means we sort of try to cook everything all of the beans that we bought too many of, all of the pasta, sort of clear out everything, which is which is the idea, yeah, thank you, of, of using what you have in the fridge or the cabinet. Um, another recommendation for buying larger things when you can and freeze, freeze things to store them. Don't shop when you're hungry. Make your snacks is a great way to save. Oh, make cake or cookies, also a great suggestion. Um, and it seems so simple and yet it's so smart. I know I looked at getting cupcakes for my, my son's birthday and it was, you know, a 24 pack for his friends. This was of course pre-COVID was, I don't know, $15, I don't know, a lot. And then a box of, of cupcake mix is, you know, 95 cents. So yeah, making those snacks is a great idea. Um, great, lots of good, good ideas. Um, anybody else has any good ideas? All right, any other questions? Well, thanks, Michael, for the compliment. <laughs> Hopefully this was a good 
session today. Um, I really encourage any of you, if you know a child or you have a child or whatever, come on February 18th, register for that because I would really recommend it. Um, I myself have two little ones. One of the programs I'm gonna be talking about or actually the expert will be talking about is called Fund My Future. And this is a program that if you sign a pledge, then you will be eligible. If you sign a pledge to save every month for your children, you will then be eligible to win $1,000 in a monthly raffle. And I won this $1,000 because I do save every month for my children. And so all I had to do was sign sign up for this, sign this pledge really. And it's really great and it's easy and it's a nonprofit out of Pittsburgh that does it. And so it's, um, it's really cool. So there are some other cool programs that you can find out about. You don't have to be a parent in order to save for a child or to get the information to share with other people. So, oh, Acorns app, yes. All right, so um, Markeisha's sharing, if I, I think that, that I got your name, um, said that the Acorns app has a family plan to save. And I have not gotten into all of the apps because I go always old school when it comes to money, but um, I'm gonna check that out because it's it, it comes up a lot, the Acorns app. And so if it's something that can sort of help the family get on the same page, I think that's great. And it's really interesting with the kids too. I've been working, I have a five-year-old and she has an account, but it's she's she's not gonna be using physical money really. And so it's been interesting to sort of strategize, how am I teaching her about this and how are we figuring out what savings mean when you don't actually hold a dollar much? So um, thank you for that recommendation. I will definitely check it out. Right. Well, if we don't have any additional questions, we are done for today. Please fill out that quick survey at the end so that we have some great ideas for things moving forward. And I appreciate you all coming and attending again. Um, this has been a fun few weeks. Was anyone here for all three of these sessions? A chat feature would be useful, but okay. Oh, Sharonda. All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Somebody missed last week. Okay, great. Um, okay, a few of you. Excellent. Well, good. And I, I do hope it was useful. Email if you have questions. And um, you know, one day we can do this in person, maybe. Although I tend to not have the same amount of attendance in person. So I'm glad to continue to do things online as, as long as people are interested in, in coming. All right, well, thank you again very much for coming today and taking the time. Grab those handouts now. It's the easiest way to get them is to open them now so you have the PDFs and um, complete my survey and have a lovely rest of the day. Stay warm because it is a cold one out there. So, all right, great. Um, and thank you again for attending. And I look forward to, to having you attend another virtual webinar in the future.